I'm Jason with Born Handy and this video is a continuation of the aquarium build and this particular video is specifically about how I built the retrofit light kit that I'm going to use in this aquarium. If you caught my earlier video on how to build a professional looking sump, I gave quite a bit of advice in that video about how to draw in vector art and how to get that vector art to a sign shop and have them cut for you. That advice applies here as well because the material that I used came directly from a sign shop. And now let's get right into how I built this light. So the first thing I want to do to get this light kit set up is I need to remove this portion of the base for each of the bulbs. At the end of the day, I need this thing here to sit flush onto the reflector that I've made for myself. And so I'm going to take this and remove it using a hammer and chisel. I will say that I tried to remove one earlier using a circular saw and that ended pretty badly. So I think a hammer and chisel is a safer bet to go with this. Now that I have that piece removed from the base, I'm going to go ahead and attach a little bit of double-sided tape. And this is how I'll connect this piece to the canopy. Now in case you're thinking it seems a little bit crazy to use double-sided tape to attach something electrical over water, let me just say that up front that sounds right, but let me also say that not all double-sided tape is created equal. And this stuff is not the same thing as the double-sided tape that you're probably thinking of. This is a very high bond tape from 3M. I'm not being sponsored by 3M in any way, but I will tell you that I've used this stuff quite a bit over the years and I've always been impressed with it. They claim that it's more powerful than rivets in most applications and I gotta say that I think I agree with them. And now that that's applied, I'll need to cut out the rectangle in the center to allow me to get the wires in. And that's a completed piece. I'll do the same thing with the other. And now with the caps prepared, I've brought the reflector in place and I wanna take a second to talk about this reflector and what it is. This is a material that you can also get from your favorite sign shop. It's polished aluminum on one side and on the other side it's painted white. And really you kind of have the choice of which side of the reflector that you want to use. In my case I figure both are probably pretty good but I did go ahead and go with the polished aluminum. As for spacing out the caps I'm simply going to peel away the protective backing from the tape. I've got my combination square set at three and a half inches. And then I'm going to very carefully place the cap. The reality is you only get one shot to do this. If you mess this up, you're not pulling this back off without either bending the reflector or possibly breaking the reflective cap. And now for the next part, I'm going to need the bulb in place. I'm only going to get one shot to get this right. And so I needed the bulb in place to help me get proper alignment because once this is down, there's no going back. And I think we have the beginnings of a pretty good looking hybrid kit. Now I'm going to need to drill the holes to allow me to wire the end caps. I think if you ever find yourself drilling this material, you'll be surprised at just how easily it machines. The wires came already stripped, and this basically indicates that I need to connect two red wires to the end of a single bulb. They should simply push in and connect, and they do. Now for the other bulb, I'll use the two blue wires. Literally at this point, the wiring diagram simply tells me which color should go where. And that completes wiring the ballast to the bulb. Now I need to get power to the ballast. At this point, the reason that I cut the bases off of those little end caps is probably a little bit more obvious. Basically with the base on, it's stuck out just about a half of an inch beyond this reflector. And the truth is, I made this reflector uh, before I ordered this retrofit kit. And I really just didn't realize that it was gonna be bigger. And this reflector was made to fit inside of this canopy. So if I hadn't done that, I wouldn't have been able to get a clean fit 
like this. You may have also noticed that I've gone ahead and attached two pieces of oak and the pieces of oak go beyond the reflector and rest on top of the canopy. This basically allows me to have a situation where there really isn't very much weight or uh, burden on the reflector itself when I add the Kessel lights. This oak rod simply passes through the ring on each of these Kessel lights and then you can see that I've got the holes pre-cut for the Kessels. Then the wooden rod sits on top of these spacers and gives me some level of adjustability to get these Kessel lights centered directly in the center of that cutout hole. It's a pretty tight fit and after I make the attachments that are going to be necessary to make sure that the rod that holds the Kessel lights isn't going to be accidentally knocked over, it'll also be very stable and very secure. And that's pretty much going to wrap up the build of this particular light kit. And you're also getting a little bit of a sneak peek into where we are on the aquarium build. There's more to come on this later on. But for this video, that's going to wrap it up. So I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, how about a like and a subscribe. And that way you won't miss any of the upcoming videos that I have planned for this aquarium build. And until next time, this is Jason with Born Handy.